Hey everyone, it's Kirk McLean here, and you're watching Clay's Canucks Commentary. Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary Live, presented to you by Van City Experts Real Estate. I am your host, Clay Emo Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It is Wednesday night, April the 10th. Thanks for waiting. This is a little bit later than usual for a couple of reasons. Number one, we, Parker and I, just did Canucks After Dark, so thanks to all of you who watched us over there for the past hour. And number two, yeah, the Canucks After Dark started late because the game went into overtime. So as I usually do on a night where there's Canucks After Dark, I won't talk about the game too extensively because Parker and I just did that for an entire hour. So if you want really, really good Canucks analysis, uh, go to watch the replay of Canucks After Dark on YouTube. But what I will do tonight is I'll offer some very quick, some very quick um, reflections on tonight's game. We'll look, do a quick look at the standings. We'll, we'll see why everyone's freaking out about the Edmonton Oilers. And then we'll do all that in the first five or 10 minutes. And then we will play some games tonight, as I like to do on Wednesday, uh, not Wednesday nights, on nights where we have Canucks after dark. Nice to see you, Trev. Hope you had a good show tonight. Just Incredible says, Nice shirt. Looks very final boss like. Thank you. I it was basically my ode to uh, Rick Dollywell, uh, Rick Dollywell, but I appreciate that as well. So let's get going. Moderators, do what you need to do to keep this a safe and respectful place. Members, as legends, Hall of Fame and franchise members, thanks for your support as always, and to everyone else, no matter where you're watching from, whether my beautiful neighborhood of Steveston and Richmond in the city, Lower Mainland Province, country, continent, or around the world. Thank you for being here. You know that I know that you can be doing anything else, watching anyone else, getting ready for work, school, or better. All three. But the fact that you are here with me at 11.30 at night, this is a late one. The fact that you are here with me, know how much I always appreciate you, and I never, ever take you for granted. So you can get involved in these ways, you guys. You can subscribe to the channel so you get active in the chat section and get notified of my videos every single day. You can like the video, like the fact that Canucks had an awesome third period and came back to get uh, at least a point. Like the fact it was Canucks for Kids Telethon, like the fact that Quinn Hughes is over 90 points for the season. And like the fact that I'm wearing the, the sweetest Hawaiian shirt that you've ever seen. Okay, maybe not that you've ever seen, but this is indeed my, my old trick dolly wall, as I've mentioned. You can leave a donation, get the donation train out of the station. You can gift memberships. You can buy your own membership. You can upgrade your own membership. If you can use your monthly membership message, your triple M, or you can, if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. And then Urban saying more of a happy Corbin vibe. Yeah, I'll take that. He's doing well at NXT. So that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so for tonight, let's uh, let's do this. I'm going to talk about the game for literally five minutes or so. We'll look at the standings for another two or three minutes. And then I'll turn it over to you for games. I think what I'll do, so you know how that, that game with the map takes forever? I think I'm not going to start that one tonight before midnight because I don't like it when it switches and I, we get all stressed and we get all rushed when we're trying to play that game as the, the clock straddles midnight. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk Canucks for about 10 minutes. Then we're going to do all the non map games until midnight. And then at midnight, we will play the map game and then I will go to bed after I drink this Pepsi, of course. So let's do this. Let's talk about tonight's game and I'm not going to go painfully goal by goal. I'll just talk about some general things. But um, again, if you're if you're at Canucks After Dark, you would have uh, heard a lot of um, a much more detailed analysis of what happened. But we can we can talk about this a little bit. First period, I wasn't there. Oh, by the way, um, is Nux six forty nine in here? Because Nux six forty nine. So let's do this properly. Shannon won a, gi a giveaway two weeks ago. But because she had been gifted tickets and because of where she lives, she gifted those tickets to Nux 649. So Nux 649 went to the game, which is cool. And then he happened to be in my 316 seats where we have four. And sitting next to him was Jacob and Jacob's friend. So Nux 649 got to meet Jacob. Jacob even took a picture, a selfie of him and Nux 649 sent it to me, which is pretty cool. So I'm not sure if Nux is in the chat right now. 
but yes, it's pretty cool that they uh, they got to sit together. Sean was also there with his with his girl Francesca, and then so yeah, both Sean and Jake were at the game tonight. Meanwhile, I was at my church because it's Wednesday night religious education. So I got home after the first period. I called Sean after the first period. I said, "Well, how was the first period?" He goes, "Pretty slow, pretty uneventful." And then I look at the stats: eight to two shots on goal, but not a lot going on. And then, oh, Edmund, you were at the game. That's good. Then second period, we had the Josh Brown goal. Then JT Miller thinking that we we're going to get to the second intermission tied at 1-1. But then I, the guy whose name I can't say, Kalia Chunuk, scored on a, on a weird one where Seelovs is still looking for it. So it's 2-1 going in the third. Then Dylan Gunther scores on, on that really long shift giveaway by Quinn Hughes. But then Connor Garland and PD scored that. And then... As the third period went on, I was like, there's no way the Canucks are going to lose this game. This game's not even get, going to get to overtime. The Canucks have so much momentum. It sure felt like that. But then in the overtime, Arizona takes control. They kind of bore us to death. And then Brock Bester takes that penalty. But then Phil Arona gets a penalty shot, of which he should have just done the slap shot instead of trying to do a move because he's really not good at doing that move. And then and then as that penalty is ending, I'm not sure what took Brock Bester so long to get back to the zone, but he didn't. And then Logan Cooley scores and Dylan Gunther has four points for the Arizona Coyotes. And I'm not going to relitigate, rehash that whole trade Garland, Ekman Larson for Erickson, Beagle, Roussel, Gunther, and other pieces. But we know how that's turned out, especially the cap hit, the cap penalty from Ekman Larson, the buyout. And then uh, Parker reminded me, yeah, don't think of it as Dylan Gunther, four points against us because Gunther might not even be on our roster right now if he was on our team. So yeah, no more coulda, shoulda, woulda, but just an acknowledgement that Gunther is going to be a good player. He's, our, he's already a good player right now. So you can look at it as, man, the Canucks were down 3-1 with 10 minutes to go and the fact that they got a point, that's good. Uh, you can look at it as, man, after that big win on Monday against Vegas, it's not like the Canucks laid an egg, but you wish that they had beaten Arizona a little bit more easily. It just shows that uh, the law, um, you, you, any team can beat any other team on any given night. And I always say this, you can't just because you think the Canucks are better than a team doesn't mean they're going to win. You have to execute on the ice and, uh, and the other team's trying just as hard as you are. So I'm not mad. I'm not disappointed. I'm at a place now where I'm pretty grateful and I'm pretty excited that the Canucks are going the postseason. But this last, this last week and a half is going to be fascinating to see where they end up. So speaking of which, let's look at the standings right now. And you look at the division, the Pacific Division. This is why it's tricky. With the Edmonton win over Vegas and with our getting one point tonight, not two, they are now exactly four points behind us with two games in hand. So they win those two games in hand. They are tied with us, but we hold the tiebreaker, uh, which is regulation wins. So the, technically Edmonton has to finish ahead of us, whereas we can finish tied with them if that makes sense. Follow me with this. If Edmonton beats Arizona on Friday night, they'll have 78 games played, 103 points. So they will be two behind us. Then if Edmonton beats us in regulation on Saturday, they'll have 79 games played, 105. We'll have 80 games played, 105. And then Vegas, uh, sorry, Edmonton will be in the driver's seat. However, let's presume that Edmonton beats Arizona, but we beat Edmonton. We will have 107 and 80. They will have 103 in 79. And then it's going to be very hard for them to beat us. So that's why this Saturday night game is turning out to be huge. Now, I would love it. I would love it if Arizona beats Edmonton on Friday. So the, then Edmonton comes into the game with 101 points in 78. Then even if they beat us, there'll be 103 points in 79. We'll be, we will still technically be up on them with two points and they have a game in hand. So I guess the, the, the proper domino effect is let's see what happens. Arizona against Edmonton first on Friday. And then let's definitely see what happens when we play the Oilers on Saturday. Regardless, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing to, to get to that point, um, to be playing for such an important game this Saturday night. I cannot wait to watch it. Okay, let's get to, uh, you know what I'll do? Let's do this. I will do five minutes of your questions and comments about the game. 
before we move to our games night. So let's go. Hughes has the most three-point games in a season by a defenseman not named Bobby Orr. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. If Coyotes beat Edmonton in regulation and we do also, we clinch. Oh, you mean, yes, if if they lose the next two, that makes sense. Pronick was too slow on the penalty shot. We win and sweep the season series. Uh, McDavid has a lower body injury, Adrian. Yeah, lower body injury. All right, guys, let's keep it going. I'll take a few more thoughts on the power play tonight. Obviously not as good as Monday night's performance where and maybe they got scouted or maybe they tried different things tonight. Positive takeaways. Connor Garland, Quinn Hughes, um, and their their I guess their their fight at the end of the game. They um their penalty kill too. They went five for five on their penalty kill. The plan is for Demko to play on Saturday. I'll take Nashville, please. Yes, Shannon, I mentioned that earlier, that um, Nux649 was there uh, due to your generosity, so I don't think he's in the chat right now. Uh, I don't think you you base Hornick's next contract on one penalty shot, but uh, yeah, I, I think we do got to see how he performs in the playoffs. I think both play on Saturday, Jack. Undefeated with Tom Greenman, Clay Dressman, defeated with Hronik penalty shot, man. I, <laughs> I would just love it if you can continue to add to this list throughout the rest of the season. I thought Lindholm was great too. Yes, I, uh, he looked engaged. Rick, Rick, um, Ray Ferraro was saying on the, on the broadcast that Lindholm was really good. And I remember that one one-timer he had in the third period that he looked, he looked strong. He looked really good. Uh, I, I don't think Pod Colson makes the difference over PDG, but I understand what you're saying. I don't think PDG even saw the ice in the third period, did he, or, or very rarely. What was his ice time? Probably like six or seven minutes, right? Yeah, okay, nine minutes. Uh, Suter had only eight minutes. That's Yeah, Suter is n not in talk. It's good books right now. Um, I think it's okay to play PDG, especially if you got to see what you have for playoffs, right? Same question. Yeah, I'm okay with it for now. Yeah, Simon, we still don't know. I've explained it a couple of times. We still don't know if it's going to be Nashville, LA, or Vegas. Depends on how things turn out. Bad bounces right now. Getting ready for playoff hockey. That's fair. Jack would be happy if we win. I agree. Jason, I end up donating $85 tonight. Three times 20. Three cannot goals times 20. And then a $25 bonus because Quinn Hughes got to 90 points. So 85 bucks. And to me, Pod Colson is busier than PDG. That is totally fair. All right, guys. I'm going to do a, my mid-show sponsor read now so we can get to our games right after. And I'll answer this last one. Do I think Vegas will keep losing? No. I think they're too good to keep losing. Shout out to my primary sponsor, Van City Express Real Estate. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Shout out to my secondary sponsor, Perform and Transform Personal Training and Weight Loss. Check them out at ptforum.com. Thank you to Gassy Jack Art, maker of that fine artwork. And thank you to Vessi Footwear. Use the link tinyurl.com slash Vessi Clay and receive a free pair of socks off your next purchase of Vessi shoes. Don't forget, tomorrow is a members-only stream, and that's at 11 p.m. Members only tomorrow night at 11 p.m. And by the way, I will not be doing a show on Sunday night because I'm seeing a show downtown at the Commodore that I'm driving a friend home. So I uh, no show on Sunday night. Just a heads up for all of you. Mid-show reminder to all of you to subscribe, get active in the chat section, and get notified of my videos every day. You can like the video. There are 156 people here combined from X and YouTube, which is awesome. Only 12 likes. That's a pretty bad ratio. So let's get those likes up. Um, you can leave a donation. Will you be the first? to get the donation train out of the station. You can get the membership. You can buy your own membership. You can upgrade your own membership. You can use your monthly membership message, your triple M, or you can rate and review if you're listening on a podcast platform. And yes, before we get started, yeah, I, I am been watching a lot of shows. It was uh, Hairspray a week and a half ago. It was Joe Coy last Sunday. And it's uh, Jacob Collier, a very creative musician. That's the show I'm going to see 
this Sunday. And Shannon says, love the shirt. Thank you, Shannon. I love the fact that you love the shirt. By the way, uh, I think Fangirl might not have made it here. I think she was getting tired at the end of Connects After Dark. So Fangirl and Shannon, you know that I have to move my, um, I have to move my, my one-on-one -on -one chats with you tomorrow night to the weekend. Yes, Irvin, I am very aware that Rinkwide does a what YouTube live now instead of just a podcast. I do believe they've been watching your show success and wanted a piece of the action. Irvin, that is very kind of you. There is a small part of me that says when anytime starts, someone starts a YouTube show that there's a small part of me that isn't true. Let's put it that way. There's a small part of me that would love to think, oh, it's because of what I'm doing. But no, anyone's allowed to do a YouTube show. There are people that were doing them before me. There are people that are going to do them after me. I don't think anyone does it as consistently as I do, but it, it, that's, it's not a competition. It's not a race. It's not anything like that. But yeah, it makes sense. If they were already recording to podcast, then they could have just gone live. And I'm not worried about it. It's like from a standpoint of competition or eating into my, my viewership because I'm, I rarely do live post games. I think my bread and butter is this 11 o'clock time if if that makes sense so um yeah but thank you thank you for the compliment i appreciate that now let's do let's do our games as we always do so i think uh the usual i have one rule when we play those games and that's don't be a jerk don't spoil it for everyone else just have fun with it. If you've already played, then, then, uh, yeah, if you already played, then, then don't wreck it for, for other people. That's it. That's my only rule. So let's have some fun. We, I felt like I haven't done a games night for a while. Why? Yeah. I was away for one week in Vegas. So maybe that's what it is. I can't remember which games we play anymore. Let's start with this one. I think we play this one. Yeah, no Googling, no nothing. Just don't cheat. Now, we're going to guess who this player is, but there's no silhouette anymore. It's broken. So just give me the name of any player. Any player, and we're trying to guess this player just from no prompts at all. No silhouette, no nothing. Someone give me a player, and we're going to see what happens. Everyone says Mitchell Reed hype. Yeah, we, we need a donation. We, we're getting shut out on donations tonight. Philip Ronick. So we got the Western Conference. We got defensemen, but not the Pacific Division. And he's not Czech, and he's older than 26. So I need a, I need a defenseman from the Central Division. And yes, I, I think there's a lot of space for content creators, collab opportunities. Great point, Eastman. Someone give me a defenseman in the central division. Central division. Who's not Czech and is older than 26. No, Nurse is, plays in our division. Central division, Colorado, Dallas, all those teams. I just need a guy who's older than 26. What do we got, you guys? Roman Yossi. Oh, good guess. Actually, no. Oh, wait. What what nationality is? What's Che, C-H-E, as opposed to C-Z-E? Anyways, so we we knew he was Central Division. We know his defenseman. So close to the 33-year-old age and not one of these countries. Krug, who plays for St. Louis now. Oh, okay. So we're getting there. Still central division, still defenseman around the age of 30s and not USA born either. Hmm. Can't be USA born. And where's the jersey number lower than 47? Tanev plays in the Pacific Roland. We need a central division defenseman. Oh, Swiss. Is that what it is? We got a Morse. Isn't Morse US though? No, so I can't do him. Let's do Zaitsev. I like Zaitsev. Oh, just incredible. Out of nowhere, guesses Nikita Zaitsev. We can't see the his silhouette, but we do know Chicago Blackhawks, 32 years old, Russian, only 
Oh, jersey number 22. Nice, Justin. Nicely done. So, Justin, guess what? You have earned the shot. You have earned the honor of giving me the first guess for Gordal. So, give me a name with six digits in it, Justin. Not digits. What? Are, these aren't numbers. What's wrong with me? Give me a player's name with six letters in it, Justin. This is the last name, of course, but you I'll give you 20 seconds because you were indeed the reason why we got the other one right. So what do we got, Justin? Horvat. Justin says Horvat. And we got one letter right. We got an R. So I will take the next one. Actually, <laughs> Justin with the RKO out of nowhere. I love it, Tyler. Love it. Azam says Ehlers. I like that. And that fits all of our all of our criteria. Okay, slowly but surely. So now we got the L and we got the R. So I'll take the next name I see that has an L and an R in it, but no H-O-V-T-E-A. No more H-O-V-A-T-E-H or S. Daniel, it's got to be six letters, and the question mark does not count as a letter. So I can't go Lazar question mark. I guess technically that would be Lazar, but no, I can't do that. I need another name that has an L and an R, but no, none of the other letters. And not in those positions. We still got to get Irvin. It's got to have an L and an R. I can't use geeky. <laughs> we don't. Although I would love to get an I and a U out there just to exhaust all the vowels. What else could it be? What else could it be? Yeah, this is hard. I know. I know. Canadian kangaroo. Let's think of another person who has an L and R in their name. You know, I'm willing to, yeah, it won't be Miller because the L isn't in the third spot, but I'm willing to try a, a different name just to get some more. It's kind of cheating, but just to eliminate some more letters. Like I want to see what a P and a C and an I. So is there any name that has, that looks like this, that's got an N, an I, a P in it? Panic? There, there's no guy named Panic, right? I, I want a name that has an N and an I in it, just so I can get some. Irvin, six letters, six letters, Irvin. In the last name. We probably only have two minutes, too. Hmm. Someone give me a name that has an N and an I in it, just so I can. Ooh, actually, uh, Kessler won't work. Daniel Hurdle, that's not how you spell it. Good try. <laughs> Myers, Hughes, H-U. No, there's too many. U-G. Irvin, Irvin. It's got to be six letters in the last name. Six letters. Oh, Irvin, I think you're playing the other game still. Costin. Ah, I like that. Duncan, I like that. So we know this name ends in I-N, and we know there's an H and there's an L in the front. This is good. This is good. So it's, we know it ends in I N and we know there's an R and there's an L. That was an excellent guess, Duncan. Like, does it end in L I N, Lynn? Does it end in R I N, Rin? Hannafin would be nice, Ricky, but that's seven letters. And I think this is going to reset on us in about 30 seconds. So we got to move. We got to move. Pin, Panarin, no. Uh, Gen, Min, Win, Yin. Hmm. You guys, I think I think we're gonna have to take the L here because it's gonna reset in like ten seconds. Do we have a last minute guess that ends in in? Oh. 
Re. Oh no, no, no. We have one last guess. We know there's an R to be used and we know that the R is in the second position. It's something R, something L-I-N. I'm just gonna try something. Hmm. It's something R, something L-I-N. How come we can't get this, guys? We're smarter than this. Something R, something L-I-N. Holy, are we completely... Oh, there we go. Marlin. Who's Marlin? Nux 649 says, oh, Breland. Ah, oh, Sergey Breland. Very good. Filmer Wax saves our butt. Yeah, Sergey Breland. There we go. Love it. Love it. By the way, here's Nux 649 popping here to say, I appreciate you and Shannon so much. I had an effing blast at the game with Jacob. It was an amazing game. Just sucks we can pull the way. Thank you. Nux six four nine. I'm glad you had fun. Jacob, text me your your selfie of you two. Glad you had a great time. I know Shannon will be happy that you had a great time. So thanks for popping in, Nux six four nine. Wonderful to hear. All right, we're good. We got two more to go. Feel more wax because you got that. You can give me the first wordle word now. Fillmore, you got 20 seconds. Give me your starting word for Wordle. Great job. That was a huge clutch win, by the way. A double leg Shannon. Actually, our Shannon is a female, Shannon Hollingworth. All right, Fillmore, you got 10 seconds. Otherwise, I'm just going to type in a word. There's Shannon. Awesome. Okay. Unless Fillmore types something in now. Oh, saying for me to go. Oh, hey, someone else give me a word. Uh, Ricky says audio. Let's do it. People like this because it nails four of the five vowels. All right. We got a U and then we got an O. So someone give me a word that has a U and an O in it, but not in those spots. I need a, a word with a U and an O. Yeah, Nux, I'll, I'll, Jacob went to bed already, but I'll ask him tomorrow about his experience hanging out with you. Nux, I hope Jacob was nice to you. Did, did he did he know anything about what was going on? Uh, Daniel, these aren't uh, these aren't hockey names anymore. Pouts. Oh, not bad. So we got the O and the U in the proper space. And now we know that there's a, an S as well. Nux says, Jacob was amazing. Shannon says, I'm glad you had a great time. And then, uh, so Nux, you say he knew what was going on in 100%. Well, he's just good at lying then. Is it S O U? Maybe it was Susie. All right, guys, give me a guess. We know that the O is in the second position. We know that U is in the O. Oh, I like spout. Oh, no, we can't use spout because there's no T. Tough. We need an S. We need a word with an S, you guys. South. Can't use South uh, Canadian kangaroo because there's no T. But I think we're getting close. I'm just going to try this, you guys. Oh. So now we know that the S is in the fourth position. So it's something. Oh, it could be that. 
Oh, so I only have two more guesses. Thank you, Erwin. So then there's some of you guys are saying mouse. I only have one more guess. Is it Laos? Is it Zaus? It's not Daos because these Raus, we Raus. I, I think it's Laos. I don't even know what Laos means, but let's do it. Oh, you guys, we got um, Gordo on the. We got Gordo on the last one. We got Wordo on the last one. I don't even know what Laos means. Good job, you guys. Oh, it's an insect that live on the skin of mammals and birds. Ew, I don't want to see this. That's gross. Okay, guys, last one. Great job, you guys. Lost in Kraus, very good. Now we're not in a rush. Like, we'll finish this properly. We won't take forever. But at least we don't have to try and rush before it changes on us. What country is this, you guys? Very square edges. Very square edges on this country. We've got a Guatemala. What else we got? Well, well, two people are saying Guatemala. I'm surprised we got no donations tonight. Maybe I won't wear the shirt anymore because it seems to it seems to scare away donations. Thank you, Guatemala. I have a feeling this is gonna be a very, very good round. All right, friends. I need four neighbors of Guatemala. Let's go. What are some bordering countries of Guatemala? What are some? Yeah, I know Dylan Gunther had four. We talked about that today too. Okay, we got a Belize. We got a Chile. We got a Mexico. Remember, I need double. Yeah, high T. Don't use Google. That's no point. Okay, so we got two. We got... Mexico and Belize as, as got that one. Good job. Belize. Don't stop Belizing. We got that. Good job. Now we got, oh, we got two votes for El Salvador. El Salvador. Nicely done. We need one more. We got a guess for uh, Chile. We got a Honduras. Yeah, someone. I was making the point, Nexus 49, though, that maybe Gunther's not on this team right now. He's still developing in Abbotsford. Who knows? A1, we'll see. Big game against Edmonton on Saturday. We got a Cuba. We got a Honduras. We got a, we got a Chile. We got a Puerto Rico. I still don't see any doubles, though. We got a DR. So obviously this is northern, the northern part of South America. Okay, we got another for Honduras. Maybe that's the one. Very good. Very, very good. Let's keep on going. What's the capital city of Guatemala? Is there such thing as Guatemala City? I'm just going to try this one. Like, thank you, thank you. It's, it's the only it's the only thing that, that I know what to do. Okay, that's my one contribution for tonight. Oh, it's Central America. Thank you, Wuhan. All right, guys, is the flag of Guatemala eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight? What is the flag for Guatemala? Type it in the chat right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Yeet. <laughs> we got an eight. We got an eight. So we have two eights so far. What else we got? We got three eights. We got, okay, we got enough eights. Let's go for it. Oh, so far we are acing this, you guys. What are the two most spoken languages in Guatemala? What are the two most spoken languages in Guatemala? I'm pretty sure I know one of them.
Yeah, Spanish has got to be one. It's got to be. So what is 70%? What's the other one? We've got an English from Ricky. Mayan language. So I need a I need a seconder for either English or the Mayan language or any other one. Another one for English. So let's do it. Spanish and English. English is wrong. Hmm. What might they speak in Guatemala? We got one vote for Mayan language. Got English, wrong, Spanish, right. Got a Portuguese. Oh, might we might have hit our first roadblock after cruising through this Guatemalan game. Okay, guys, we got Mayan language, we got Portuguese. I need a seconder for something. What's it quiche? We got French. We're getting everything, you guys. We got case. What's case? What do you guys think? We got... Gar I don't even I haven't even heard of these half of these words. Michael says your dad's from there, but I can't. No, Michael, I believe you, but I don't know what's it quiche mean. Okay, guys, if you guys aren't typing, I don't know, you've fallen asleep at your computers or you guys are stumped. We were doing so well, too. And I kind of want to move on. So unless you guys start giving me more, more um, answers, I'm going to just type whatever. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, but it quiche doesn't work. Look, I'm typing in it quiche. Quiche. Kiche. Yeah, it's not there. I can't type it unless it spells something. So I'm typing this in. Doesn't work. I'm typing in Mayan. Doesn't work. Uh-oh. I don't think there's a language called Guatemalan, right? Yeah, no, I didn't think so. <laughs> Okay, so we got this one. Hmm. Ricky says quecha. What does that mean? Uh oh, we got one more. Yeah, you guys, that keech or whatever. It doesn't, like, it's not there. All right, I think we got to move on. Portuguese it is. Oh, okay. So my bad, and I wasn't being, I just didn't know how else I was going to spell it. So I think, yeah, that's what I, I think Michael was referring to. So I'm sorry that I, had, I would have never guessed though that that was the proper spelling. So having said that, we got to get now my name is in Spanish and Quickchi. Quickchi. This has got to be this, right? 
Okay, so what's the what's the other one? Do we go with the one that has a lot of like uh, apostrophes? <laughs> I don't know what this means. Jupa itite itite itite. I be careful there. Itite itite Taj Najmosi Naya Janiwa in Kaba. Do I go with the one with all the? I'm just going with it. Looks like this. I'm doing it. Oh, oh, oh. sometimes you just got to go with your gut feeling. All right. I feel like we have momentum once again. So for this one, vote in the poll. I'm going to type it in the poll right now. Poll. We are going to go population. Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Or is it D? Okay, friends. What is the population of Guatemala? Is it less than 15 million? Is it 15 to 25 million people? Is it 25 to 35? Or is it 35 plus? What is the estimated population of Guatemala? Use the poll. 15 seconds to vote. Yeah, use the poll, you guys. Don't type in. Well, Aaron, you can type it in too, but I'm not going to count it. I'm going to use whatever you guys vote in the poll. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What do you guys say? On the YouTube poll, set. 69% of you are saying B, and we got it right. Nicely done. Now we move to the currency. So we will do yet another poll for the currency of Guatemala. And this is where I try and use hockey names as the answer. So is the currency of Guatemala UN Renminbi? UN Renminbi. 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 Help me out, you guys. Is it the rupee hints? B? Is it peso? Peso. Pace. Peso. Pay. Derek. No. Someone give me one for peso. Or is it the Jake Gens Quetzal? So is it the UN Renminbi? Is it the rupee hints? Is it the peso? Or is it the Jake Quetzal? Let me know. Let me know which one it is. I thought Jake Quetzal was pretty good. I thought uh, Ruby Hints was pretty good, but I need help on UN Renminbi and Peso. When I see Peso, I think of Michael Pekka, but that doesn't sound the same. Jeff Peso. All right, 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. Survey says you guys voted and 47% of you are saying C. But if we listen to Aaron, we would have got it right because he says that's China, Russia, Mexico, so it must be D. Although different countries uh, sometimes have the same currency, but no, uh, Aaron you were right. Uh oh. Organize the four most populated cities of Guatemala. So I just do this to put it up there. I'm not saying this is right, but I, I just want to get some, the names up there. So right now I'm putting them in alphabetical order, except for what I think is number one. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're just trying. Oh, I got to shrink this a little bit. Okay, guys, you tell me what order I should put these in, in terms of size of the city. So I put Guatemala City up top. So tell me what you think the next three should be in order. The C, the M, Coban, Mexico, or Villanueva. What should the order of these cities be 
in terms of population. Does anyone have any strong feeling any which, any which way? No, no one cares. Okay, I'm just going to guess this. Keep City as one. Yeah, we got that. Wuhan saying go, go in this order. So that is our new order. Does anyone want to? Does anyone want to challenge that? Otherwise, we're going to do it. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Let's go. Oh, we just, not bad. We got the top two, which is pretty good. Okay, let's get going. Let's pick it up a bit. One more poll. I'll put it in the chat. I'm only going to give you 15 seconds to vote. Just kind of gut feeling of what you think the size of Guatemala is. Is it less than 3,000 square kilometers? That seems really small. Is it between three and six and a half thousand square kilometers? Is it between six and a half and 10,000 square kilometers? Or is it over 10,000 square kilometers? You have 10 seconds to vote in the poll. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. I'm ending the poll and ending the poll very quickly. 50% of you are saying C. That's what I'm guessing. And we got that one wrong as well. Oh, that's it. Guatemala. Officially, the Republic of Guatemala is a country in Central America. It is bordered to the north and the west by Mexico, to the northeast by Belize, to the east by Honduras, and to the southeast by El Salvador. It is hydrologically bordered to the south by the Pacific Ocean and to the northeast by the Gulf of Honduras. And that, my friends, is the country of Guatemala. Okay, friends, we seem a little tired tonight, which is fine. It is 1230. It's even later than I usually go. So don't forget, tomorrow night is members only. That'll be at 11 p.m. And then my next show, probably not till Monday because Sunday I will not be having a show shannon i will message you about talking on the weekend uh, moving it from tomorrow night and i appreciate that everyone is here shannon thank you for your generosity in gifting your tickets tonight to nux 649 who as an extra bonus got to sit next to my son sean no jacob jacob sat next to jacob so member uh, moderators thank you for keeping this a safe and respectful place Members as legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovlander, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame franchise members as well. Thanks for your support. And to everyone else, thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. Thanks to my sponsors, Vancity Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. And this is your last chance. This is your last chance to leave a donation or to gift a membership. Otherwise, we're going to be shut out, and that's fine. I don't do this for the money, but... If you want to give a donation, you're welcome to subscribe to the channel, like the video, gift a membership, buy your own membership, upgrade your own membership, use your monthly membership message. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. So once again, we have our member show on Thursday night, tomorrow night at 11 PM. And I'll make sure that, um, yeah, make sure that you join me and we'll just have a nice casual chat about where the Canucks are right now as they look ahead to the playoffs starting in a week and a half. So thanks everyone for being here. As always, I wish that you stay safe. I wish that you stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And by the way, last month, um, last month, Gail, my lovely wife, Gail, blamed me for ruining her birthday. I think that's ridiculous. I didn't even know it was her birthday. God bless. And go, Knasko. Booyah.